Some say a stringer is only as good as their stringing machine. That might be partly true, but the other part should say a stringing machine is only as good as a calibrator. Today's video is about upgrading your tension calibrator, making it perform better and last longer. All right, let's go inside. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is show you a, a typical tension calibrator. Probably most of you have something like this. It's a spring tension calibrator. And uh, there's various brands, but they pretty much function the same. And typically when you get them, it will come with a synthetic type string tied to the, the two ends. And um, you know, I've used those as is, but uh, eventually they break. In fact, I don't know if you ever had one break on you, but you know, after so much use, it breaks right where it's uh, tied onto the calibrator. So one day I was thinking, why not just use Kevlar? I mean, that's the most durable string. And on top of that, what I did is add tubing. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to tie the first two knots on the calibrator. Okay, so I have uh, two pieces of Kevlar, both about 18 inches in length. And I have two pieces of nylon tubing cut at an inch and a half. I also have an article that I wrote about this tip on my website so there's a link below if you want to check out some of the pictures and um, read about it. But basically what you're going to do is uh, make sure that as you put the tubing into the Kevlar string that you try to center it first so it's right in the middle of that 18 inch length of string. Then you're going to go ahead and insert it into the hole on one side and once you get it in you want to just make sure you you fold uh, the tubing over so it's also um, halfway folded and then also make sure the um, tips on the other side are even so once you get those two things lined up then you want to just tie an overhand knot and you want to try and get that knot as close to the tubing as possible so I'm gonna go ahead and tie right here and I might have to slide the knot down, but basically you want to make it so that it comes out like that. All right, so I already did the other side, but um, that's the first two knots that's attached to your tension calibrator. I did mention that most of you probably have a spring type tension calibrator, but there are electronic types and there's so many different types that, um, you know, depending on how it's designed, uh, you might be able to use the same technique with the two knots on the ends But the particular one that I use it's a fishing scale It has this bracket on the top which is metal and it won't allow me to actually tie a string there Actually, I'll show you later on in this video how I modified the way I Upgraded this tension calibrator, but I'm still using a piece of Kevlar on the the hook end so I'll show you that on my electronic machine. Okay, so for this demonstration, I have a Prince Neos 1000 lockout machine. And before I set up the uh, calibration, I'm gonna actually adjust my tension head so that I'm moving it up. Uh, this is the top riser of this machine. And I'm gonna move it up so it just, move, just clears so there's enough space for this to uh, rotate. And uh, I did an article and a video on why I think it's important to always position your tension head in the same spot when you start pulling each string. And on top of that, you want to make sure the knob is at 12 o'clock. So yeah, if you haven't seen that video, check it out and uh, it'll make more sense. So anyway, I have this position and what I'm going to do is lock the turntable in place. And before I secure the tension calibrator, I want to make sure my clamps, my string clamps, are centered in the turntable. Uh, some of you might use a starting clamp to back up the string clamp and then do it that way. But I prefer to actually use the two string clamps. So what I'm going to do is make sure that before I put it in those clamps that the side that pulls out to, to read the calibration is next to the tension head. And the first clamp, make sure that you get it right up to the knot. So what you're going to do is just make sure that the, the Kevlar string isn't about halfway into the teeth of the clamp. And then I got the second clamp here. So it's going to go right next to it and clamp it right there. So what I'm going to do is get a pen. And you want to mark the, uh, the part of the string that comes out right out of the uh, second clamp. And that's going to be an indication of where I'm going to tie my third knot. Okay, on the other end, you want to make sure that the 
Kevlar string is in the gripper and same thing you're gonna just make a mark at the very end of that gripper. Now that I marked the Kevlar strings where I'm gonna tie the knot basically I'm just gonna look for it and tie an overhand knot and make sure that the knot is right where I mark both ends of this Kevlar and what this is gonna do is force me to make sure that my string clamps are always placed between the two knots and the tension head gripper is always going to be positioned in the same place when I start to pull the string back. And after I tie this, I'm going to test it out to make sure that I'm in the right spots. Um, it should be since I'm getting it right on that mark, but I'm not going to cut these ends yet. I want to just make sure I test it out on the machine. All right, so now we need to check to make sure that everything is good. I'm going to go ahead and get the side that goes into the string clamp and clamp the first one down next to the knot that's near the tubing then the second clamp goes in and the knot should end up on the outside of that second clamp now just make sure that your clamp is holding the string so that it's flat within the teeth of the clamp and on the other end you're going to just make sure that the knot right here is at the end of that gripper on that side so i went ahead and actually cut this already but uh, once you can confirm that those two things are in the right place, then go ahead and cut off the ends at about a half an inch. All right, I'll show you another tip that I use for my digital calibration scale and how I put Kevlar strings also to uh, upgrade that one. Okay, for this demonstration, I'm on my Prince P7000 electronic machine. And since I'm using a digital scale for calibration, you'll notice that on this particular one, it has this metal bracket on this end, so I couldn't tie a Kevlar string on this end or I, could, uh, I couldn't clamp it in my string clamp. So what I'm gonna do is use the post at six, six o'clock and just wrap it around there. So what's gonna happen is um, on this, this end, I use the Kevlar string and I made a similar knot using the, I mean, I'm sorry, the tubing and the knot on this end. And then I also, this is already made, so I also have the knot that'll go at the end of the tension, uh, the gripper. So I'm gonna put this in place. This just goes around this hook here. And if you'll notice, when I place it into the, the gripper right here, the knot's right at the end. And as I pull it and check tension calibration, uh, it's always in that same spot. So similar to the uh, lockout machine, uh, using this will also make sure that I'm always pulling the same way every time I'm checking calibration. I hope you found today's tip helpful. By upgrading your tension calibrator, it can make a difference in how it perform and make it last longer. Besides, your tension calibrator is your stringing machine's best friend. So if someone says the stringer is only as good as the stringing machine, it's really the stringer is as good as the tension calibration. If you'd like to learn more about racket stringing, make sure to check out my other videos on my channel. I also included a link to the International Alliance of Racket Technicians. It's an organization, if you become a member, you'll be able to learn to string the right way from veteran stringing professionals. Also, it's a great way to prepare for the USRSA certification test if you wanna become a certified stringer or a master racket technician. All right, thanks for watching, happy stringing, and let your strings play.